Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Fulani. Um, let's look at the petroleum industry bill uh, uh, this morning, uh, at least an aspect of it. You know, it's a bill, we're looking for it to become a law and um, we've had this aspiration for a long time. It's been kicking around for a long time. No resolution, even in the last, in the administration of President Abbasanjo. Um, but Stakeholders are talking about it. In the House of Representatives, you know, they are uh, getting people together, all stakeholders, to consult with them fully, as was said by the Speaker, um, so that they can do a reapprochement uh, with this bill. And even the Vice President was, you know, out in the Niger Delta yesterday uh, at a similar kind of event where stakeholders were, you know, gathered and concerned. And um, we're looking at how to get out of the quagmire that the bill has become. Well, to, to, to help us understand some of those issues that are involved, why it's so complicated, why it's been going on for ages, uh, and also why the bill uh, apparently has been now split into four separate parts. Uh, what's that all about? This begins to hint at the complexity of the issue, perhaps. Well, we've got a petroleum engineer and chartered accountant, uh, uh, not to mention geologist, but we'll leave that out for now, uh, our friend Bala Zaka, oil and gas expert. Thank you very, very much for coming on, Bala. Thank you, and good morning, Nigeria. Indeed. It's our pleasure to have you on the show. First of all, maybe we could just jump in even before I understand. Maybe we should even, I think let's go a bit systematically. Um, could you explain it so that um, a Form 1 kid, is there Form 1 anymore? No, yes, one. Yes, you, you know what I mean. Yes. Might understand why is the, this petroleum industry bill even necessary at all? I know it's a complex subject, but how would you explain it in the simplest of terms? Okay, the reason why the petroleum industry bill is necessary and you need to pass it into law and make it an act is because for anybody who wants to come into Nigeria and contract within the Nigerian oil and gas industry, there will be a need for a document that will show the necessary obligations of that investor, whether the investor is a local investor or an international investor. And there will also be a display of the necessary obligations of the government of the country, in this case, the government of Nigeria. So when you have something like that, something that is a law, and I, you're coming into contract, it simply means if you operate within the confines or within the conditions of these laws, you are likely to recoup from your investment, you are likely to be happy, then the government of that country, the host community of the country, the workers in the country that you are going to, to to engage will all be happy. So there's a mutually beneficial uh, um, framework yes. on the ground that people would have seen, yes. uh, especially from the point of view of um, external investors. And, and so there's internal no, investors. And, and, and as well as internal. Yes. Uh, but particularly for people who are not of these parts, but want to know, I don't have to be part of so those parts. What is the framework? Let exactly. me see to what extent I can comply because any or not. Any country you're going into or any domain you need to know the laws that are obtainable and that operate there. Mm. But principally, in the case of the Nigerian, I mean the current petroleum industry bill, the simple reason is because before now, as far back as 1969, we have had the Petroleum Act. So from 1969 to now, mm -hmm. you're talking about probably 48 years. Yes. Any law that has been there for 48 years, mm -hmm you know, there is a need for you to review it because so many things have changed. In the last, in the last 48 five, de years, five decades years. almost. So you're talking about then, you, some of the taxes, you were talking about COBO. 
were ridiculous. You're talking like about that. Naira. Yes. And you're talking about, just like our, our, our legal laws, you know. So a lot of these things have changed. Mm. And in the so days... there's a need for a review, quite Exactly. Frankly. And if you look at it, in, the, in 1969, most of the drilling and operations or exploitation <laughs> were taking place on land and what we call shallow waters. Mm. That is waters that are not, not deep. Mm. But today, based on the growth and development or dynamism in technology, people can go and within territorial waters of Nigeria, we have so much endowment of crude oil. And people still go there where you can go to as deep as probably 10 kilometers to be able to get crude oil. So the conditions which have to change. Which to were not the original which were, yes, drafters because of the law. Because as at that time, we had enough oil on land and enough conducive environment on land and shallow waters. Okay. So it, 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 it then begins apparently to get a bit more complicated from there. I will, we will come to that. What we need to do before we resume this conversation is, are Maria, uh, Maria, uh, Maria Olashende, um, she's a correspondent in the vice president's office, and as I said, the vice president was out at a forum yesterday. Uh, let's take her report, uh, and then we'll come, come back and continue with this conversation. No worries. The petroleum industry bill was conceived more than 10 years ago and has built a lot of controversy over the years, preventing its passage into law by successive governments. At this town hall meeting, key areas of urgent intervention have been identified by stakeholders from the South-South region who spoke to TVC News about their challenges. People in the host communities, like if you talk about the oil producing areas, we have people who can no longer fish, people who can no longer farm, people who do not have the next meal, yet their environment and livelihood have been destroyed. There should be a, a bill that captures all uh, interests you know, of the host communities. Everybody should bring uh, whatever they have on the table. Then um, whatever um, should come to the host communities should be, should be according to the quantum of uh, their uh, contributions. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo discloses to the stakeholders that the proposal of government is to have three pieces of legislation that will deal with governance and regulatory issues for upstream, midstream and downstream, not just for oil, but also for gas. I think that um, if you look at what has happened so far, you will find that the NMPC, you know, and of course uh, the various agencies under it, have just over the years, over the years, have acquired a terrible reputation. And frankly, uh, my belief is that we must take a look at how to, as much as possible, ensure that government plays less and less a role, aside from its purely regulatory function. I believe that what should happen is that we should have a regulatory, uh, a regulatory body the accolade that we are likely to get if eventually we are able to pass this BIB bill. I say if eventually, because Nigeria is running a mono economy, a mono product economy, and that is oil, and whatever that touches oil in Nigeria, touches everybody. On June the 2nd, 2016, the Nigerian government, with Vice President Yemi Oshibajo in attendance, launched the cleanup of Ogoni land at Bodo Gokana Local Government, River State, a project expected to last about 30 years. The PIB is expected to assist in easing the smooth and uninterrupted implementation of the project. In driving and developing the Nigeria's oil and gas sector, Stakeholders present at this town hall meeting have urged the executive to work with the National Assembly to ensure that the bill is passed. Maria Olashende, TVC News, Abuja. The petroleum industry bill was considered. Okay, that was about to run again. Okay, so that pretty much puts it succinctly. Uh, although, as, you say, as we were saying, uh, we, we heard about the whole issue petroleum industry being divided up into four separate parts. But the vice president is saying he is proposing maybe three. That's the point of view of government. Maybe could you untangle that a bit? Yes. <laughs> first of all, the reason why you still need to pass this bill into law, first of all, we're, we're talking about the obsolescence of, of the Petroleum Act 1969 to now. But apart from that, we also know that, I mean, you can be a monoproduct economy, but you can 
use that mono product to diversify and boost your economy. We know what is happening in the Middle East. We know what's happening in countries like Saudi Arabia mm. and the rest. Mm. You know, having one product is not the problem. But the question is this, to what extent do you deploy the benefits of that product to make sure you now have good higher institutions, good hospitals, good car manufacturing industries, good IT industries, people do that. And because crude oil is an international commodity, that simply means it will continue to have relevance on the international pedestal. And that means we have a product that we can take advantage of, generate the necessary revenues. But when we generate the necessary revenues, we shouldn't just do that just mm -hmm. to build up external reserve. Mm -hmm. We will want to use it to grow the GDP. It is the GDP growth that will lead to economic development. Which is all very well and good. But because of the perceived complexity, I think, is why people are proposing, I think the, certainly the vice president seems to be behind it, uh, behind that particular notion of, uh, it, it's too humongous. There's so many different disparate aspects that must work together uh, that let's just break this up into three parts. That's the part I was hearing yes. there. Even though it had been, the people have spoken about four parts before. And I've yes. also heard people say that there's nothing that the Petroleum Act um, uh, there's nothing the, what the, the desired uh, PIB will do that the existing Petroleum Act can't do. As I said, opinions all over okay, the place. Okay, let me start it from the point where people said the Petroleum Act can do, which the, I mean, the PIB is, is struggling to want to do. The truth is, like we said, we're talking about probably 48 years. Yeah, some when you look at the tax regimes, hmm. things have changed. We are no longer talking about so, COBOL. So, so it's not an amendment issue. It's an overhaul. Yeah, which it's, it's is a what complete is, overhaul. And like happening. I said at the beginning of this discussion, in those days when we came up with that, the drilling aspect, the approaches were different. We were drilling principally vertical wells. Today, what we drill what we call slant, horizontal, and multilateral wells. I just have to go a bit technical <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> in those days also, what we were talking was, you were talking about production of a few thousands of barrels per day. We are now talking about millions of barrels per day. In those days, we were not struggling to be a continental hub. But today, ordinarily, we are supposed to be the oil and gas industrial hub for the continent of Africa. So who so guides the policy of all this? Because that's a contentious area. In fact, what, we, we should come back to the whole aspect of the contentiousness yes, so of I'm, the whole I'm thing. going now to mm -hmm. then what the, the, mm -hmm. the, the president, uh, the vice president mm -hmm. said. Okay, and we, some of us had, who are, some of us who are truly practitioners and practical practitioners in this industry, we're made to understand that the pay, PIB or the Petroleum Industry Bill is very complex mm. and that is why there is a need mm -hmm. to break it down into four for easy resolution. Sometimes actually when you dismember a huge problem, then you can resolve it. But unfortunately, honestly, and with due respect to the legislators, to, to our respected Vice President, His Excellency, in the case of the Nigerian oil and gas industry, you cannot have four different bills. You it think is it's not a mistaken notion? Well, 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 that, I don't the, want to say a mistake, but there is a need to educate ourselves on how the industry works. And before I explain, let me say well, one well, thing well, clearly. Why, why I was saying that is that, um, uh, why I was suggesting that is, the vice president himself, as you know, is a legal luminary. Yes. Uh, it's not a private issue. It's a public concern. Yes. So I'm imagining that the government has at its disposal the very best in they wish Nigeria scientific advice, legal advice, and all of this. So if after bringing all those eggheads together, yes. they now say, you know what, the way to go is to and, take this one step at a time. And people like Balazaka are saying there is a need for re-education. Uh, uh, so let Balazaka give oh, his an reasons. road and his roads. Okay. You see, when you talk about the oil and gas industry, if you come into the oil and gas industry or you go to a particular location, and you want to explore and drill for crude oil, right? Immediately you arrive there. Issues of taxes will come. Issues of host community will come. 
how you are going to treat your staff will come. Mm -hmm. Issues of corporate social responsibility and many things will come to you at the same time. Yes. So you will never, as an oil company, say, no, sorry, don't be offended. Mm -hmm. The host community part of this problem yes. is still a bill. It has not been passed. So please, host community, I don't know how to deal with you. You cannot, when the tax uh, collectors come, you cannot say, I am sorry, we are just talking about regulatory aspects. The tax regimes, how much I need to pay as tax, that part has not been resolved. It is still a bill. Please, tax collectors, wait and come back later. And no. the whole matter of uh, whether <laughs> we should uh, be paying to the community no, 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 or no, no, to no. the landlord, so all of those you, are issues that yeah, also you, need... Immediately, you are, that is why the document will be one full document. Immediately, you go and you want to do. Everything will be there as a holy book to guide you. And that is why you cannot break them into four. And do and them one after the no, other. No, no, you it cannot. Won't work. That's why I explained by, to you. By the by you know, analogy you've given. Yes, because when you go now and all of a sudden host, uh, tax collectors come, what will, you, will you tell them that, no, that part of the regime, like fiscal regime bill, mm, mm, is still, mm, is, mm. Is still in, in the works? You can't tell them. But one other thing, again, I want to let Nigerians know, plus uh, his, 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 uh, I mean, his excellency is that as we speak today in Nigeria, we have enough oil and gas lawyers, enough oil and gas economists, enough oil and gas accountants, enough oil and gas environmentalists, enough oil and gas engineers. When you have a document like that, <laughs> and that is why you must work on all the documents at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because if the accountant is just working, or the economist is just working on regimes, regimes looking at certain things, if the engineer is not there with him, he will not understand the reasoning of the engineer. If the engineer is just thinking about production, the volume of gas, uh, gas and oil he will be producing. If the lawyer is not there, the engineer will just be thinking in one direction, okay. which we said unidirectional okay. thinking. Mm -hmm. And if the lawyer is just thinking regulation, 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 and he does not take taxes into mm -hmm. consideration, mm -hmm. there will be issues. So, but because we have all these experts, Nigeria is also endowed with all these brains, like I said, oil and gas lawyers, oil yes, and yes, gas yes, engineers, yes, yes. oil and There's gas no shortage of expertise. energy editors. Like, so what do you normally do in document like that? You will congregate all the brains together so that if I'm an engineer and I'm looking at production values and cycles and I want to come up with something, I will need to, to discuss that with also sure. The, 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 the lawyer. If the lawyer is drafting his document, he needs to consult with the tax person. And that is why when you work on it, you will produce one document. Okay. I, 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 you I'm can gonna... never pass them in piecemeal. Uh, okay. It's never done anywhere in the world. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that. But you can me... carry out let, correction let me... in piecemeal. Yes, but... At the end of the day, once, once you need to tweak or correct some But areas. you need an integrated but, bill. Yes, on because the all these brains need to sure. talk together. If not, before you know what's happening, the economist will not agree sure. with what the lawyer sure. worked on. And the lawyer will, will question what the engineer did. And the engineer may question what the, the, the accountant did. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hassan, thank you for holding on. Uh, go ahead, please. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Thank you for calling Good me. Good morning, Engineer Balazaka. Good morning, sir. Um, this is a very interesting document and very interesting topic, the PIB bill. The PIB bill came into being uh, during the regime of uh, President Umar Musa Eradua. And the National Assembly looked at it very well, critically, the, the Assembly at that particular point in time, and the President Assembly are still looking at it. And very interesting, the Vice President is looking at it as a lawyer. The PIB bill, there are a lot of things wrong with the PIB bill. The PIB bill, people that author the PIB bill have their own ulterior motives. That is number one. Number two, the people with input on that bill, some among them are these IOCs. And the IOCs, their interest is to take, not to give. And everything boils down to the community. I'm very much afraid. With this PIB bill, people are saying 
the community should take this, this one should take this. We are setting a very bad precedent. Bad precedent in the sense that you are setting a precedent whereby you are now having elites as area boards. The more you give, the more they ask you. And all the money that have been going to that area in terms of derivation, please let us ask the Niger Delta governors. Let us ask the NDDCs. Let us ask the Niger Delta ministry. What have they been doing with the money? We talk about the environmental devastation, about environmental degradation of these areas. And these monies, we are meant to take care of that. Look, if you go to Niger Delta, Mr. Balazaka, if you are given a job to do in Niger Delta, you will be faced with a lot of challenges by the local people, by the elites, in the sense that all that they are after is for you to give them the money, not to do the job. Mobile are doing the same thing. Total are doing the same thing. All the JVs are doing the same thing in Niger Delta. Go to Akhet. You will see them queue up to take a contract paper. And within the framework of that contract paper, there is, a, there is a column there in which a user, that means the host community must sign for you. If you like, take Dulos Vega to that area. They will never allow you to walk. The problem of Niger Delta is a Niger Delta. Let us put it straight to them. All right, they then. The Thank you very much, Mr. Hassan. Uh, because of the nature of our subject, you know, I, I had to let you, you know, take some time, even though I can see it still isn't enough. Such is the nature of this subject matter. Yes. Could, Bala, we come back to uh, the, the, the complexity as, as has been determined by some. Um, but it's not so much the complexity as the uh, contentious nature of it. I think contention is, is what people yes. uh, put, put forward more. So uh, people can't seem to be agreed. And here we are, we're beginning to hear about different notions, everything but yes. the altruistic one. Yes, you see, it, it's also unfortunate. Honestly, I, I feel very sorry for Nigeria. Any, any, anybody who is a Nigerian and moves out of Nigeria, whether you like it or not, anywhere you go, you will become a second-class citizen, whether you accept it or not. And unless you denounce your nationality, even if you denounce your nationality, your race is likely to still make you a second-class citizen. How do because, you mean? No, I, 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 I know it. I know it, and I have colleagues. Like, I, I personally have a, a, a colleague, an undergraduate colleague, who is yes. now in Norway. Mm -hmm. That person has to renounce the Nigerian citizenship completely to be a Norwegian. Yes. But even with that, the person doesn't feel comfortable like me and you here mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What I'm just trying to say honestly, it is only in Nigeria that you can move freely to anywhere. Yeah. The calamities that will affect somebody in Nigeria is, is nobody escapes from it. Yeah. The calamity in the Niger Delta mm. has, is, is not different from the calamity in the Southeast. It's not different in the, with the calamities in the Northwest. In all west, uh, southwest, and that is why when we talk about general calamities yes. and and bad performances, let us accept that it is they are Nigerian problems, and we'll solve them as Nigerian problems. No, but fundamentally, but, but one moment, because I'm going to come back to that, because you seem to be saying that look, it is the very Nigerianness in us that, yes. is, that is responsible for a lot of these our problems. But let me quickly bring in our blessing. Uh, good morning, blessing. Thank you for good holding morning. on. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, I want to support the first caller. Okay, Hassan. What I want to say is that here is the leader, the leader from Niger Delta. Those people that is collecting the money, the governor there, and the people that is in charge of the amnesty. Let them bring out how many boys that passed through the amnesty. At least from 2017 now, we are supposed to have about thousands of them, the one that they sent to London, the one that they sent to, what is it that they teach them? What is it that they learn? And mm. what is it that brought in again this Niger Delta uh, vengeance? Mm. What mm. is the NDDC mm. doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we want to know, I want to really know what are they doing? I'm from Niger Delta, I'm from Delta to be precise. Agbar to be precise. That's how worry. Mr. Yori, when you go there, you will be back, you will be surprised that are, are they really pumping money in this place? When you want to go into worry, there's one road there, Mr. Yori, you can spend more than two hours there. The question is that, are they not receiving allocation? 
Okay. Are they not receiving money from federal government? Where is the money going to? Me, I cannot go there and start bringing my family. myself. Where the governor, the people in charge of the NDC, all their children is abroad. Their wife is there. Now I want to go and kill myself. I cannot do it. But let's bring them and let's ask them what are they been doing with the money that they are collecting? Who is the people that they are giving it to? And let those people to come out and say, yes, they give us money. So okay. we start from there. All right. Thank you very much, Blessing. Yeah. Ag Agbaro, Ag Agbaro is not very far from Ugeli. There are oil wells in Ugeli. And there is a very big uh, power plant called Uturugu gas plant. And you have a, a lot of endowment of gas there. You see, this aspect they are talking has to do with another aspect of leadership, planlessness. We have leadership mismanagement. You know, and we have a situation where some people we trusted and we made our leaders, either at the state level <laughs> or local levels, ended up becoming probably economic traitors and vampires, and they have betrayed us. Some of these leaders have truly shown that they are morally insolvent, and they are probably suffering from moral uh, bankruptcy. That one is an unfortunate thing with the leaders. But what we want to talk about now has to do with the total document mm -hmm. called a contracting document, yes. the petroleum industry bill. Yes. So what I want even, to say even is Even as this, Blessing brought in exactly, those other areas. Yes, you know, you know, you know because we are, they, are, they are actually talking about the areas where if something comes now, how is it managed? That is the area they've been coming out. When we are actually talking about that binding the, and contracting the, the, document. So that the framework. Why, can, so why is it not still a law or an act? That is the question. Exactly. Without so, saying so, that, what, what Blessing is saying is yeah, irrelevant. We're not saying it's irrelevant no, but, because but, but, but she's from Agbaru, like exactly. I said. I know those places. So she is, they are actually talking about, okay, and every time we have these benefits yes. and we give our leaders, what do our leaders exactly. do with that? Exactly. That one, we will come about that and know how to panel, bit criticize mm -hmm. or abuse mm -hmm. our leaders. Mm -hmm. But let us talk about the document for okay. now. Okay. Uh, Babatunde, uh, in Suru, good morning and thank Thank you for calling in. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Good morning. Yeah, I would like to greet uh, Mr. Balaseka too. Yes, sir. Morning, yeah, sir. I've been monitoring you for some time now, and I have to tell you, you are quite prolific in your analysis, and I support you in all, in all uh, entirety. Yeah, Thank I you, want sir. to talk about the PIB bill. The PIB bill is a very strong document that must be accomplished the more be set out, the more be produced by the National Assembly, or else our petroleum industry will be killed totally. Right now, our economy has gone down, and it is because of our oil industry going down. I want to support you again. The other two callers, I am not discussing announcing them, but I want to tell them, more, more especially uh, Madam Blessing, you have got it wrong. We are not talking about how your leaders in the Nile Delta have squandered your money here. Mm. Look, look at our policy, even our economic policy of this present government. We don't have it. We don't have anything on ground. And it has, it has, it has made a lot of international investors away from us. You understand? There is difference between uh, economy and budget. If you look at our budget for today, it's around $6.2 trillion. It's equivalent about like, like $20 billion. How much will twenty billion dollars do for over two hundred million Nigerians? You know? But the economy is the only area that has sustained an average Nigeria, put uh, bread and butter to the table of average Nigeria, which I am enjoying the present government to devise a mean how to bring out an holistic uh, 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 framework policies on economy that can again woo these international investors that have left the country in the last 15, 15 months. If you don't do it, we are playing here in this country. The right. IB bill, again, must be passed, and all these ethnic sentiments from the north has to be thrown away all right. if we want this country to move forward. Okay. Thank you very, very, much, very much, Mr. Babatunde. Good morning. Um, he, he, he also kicked up some... Wait, wait, let me just go on a break. I, I just remember I've been told that I have to go on a break as soon as we come back. Uh, stay with us, please. We'll be right back.
Okay, we're looking at the contentious, you know, petroleum industry bill. Why exactly is it contentious? Why have been why have we been at it so long uh, without resolution? That's the other thing. Yeah, I will answer that straight away. But before I I, I, I do that, you know, which I means want not to, straight away. No, no, yeah. Well, well, I just want to spice it with something. Sure. You know, that has to do with Nigerian image, and we have to be very careful. As far back as 20, 2010, the Minister for Petroleum then was at a wall forum, a gathering of oil and gas experts in the, in, 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 in the world. It took place in a place called Houston, Texas in the United States. And that, that wall forum is normally called OTC, Offshore Techno uh, Technology Conference. At that forum, the Nigerian minister then said, the, petroleum industry bill was going to be passed into law before the end of that year. Mm. You see, for people like us, you just imagine what does to my public and private persona when you have a, a, a person saying, this thing will be done. So we need to also be careful when we say something and we don't implement mm. them. Mm. Even, even right now, even in this particular reincarnation of it, uh, the, 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 the administration is saying that it will be passed. Exactly. So if you look at it, then the key thing, if you look at previously, there have been three principal f issues that have even stalled the petroleum industry bill before now. What? And the first one mm -hmm. had to do with the powers of the petroleum minister. Mm -hmm. The second one has to do with host community fund. And the third one, what we call frontier exploration. So let me start. The, on the powers of the minister, so many, it was a divided house then, or a divided parliament or legislature then. And on what the discretionary powers of the ministers were. Unfortunately, when some of them were doing it, they were a bit sectional in their thinking. And that is why national interest should be the thing. As far as some people were concerned then, the minister was abusing the discretionary powers. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is this. Any country you go to, right, in this mm -hmm. world, any country, after the president, after the vice president, the minister for defense is always a powerful person. The minister for finance of every country is a powerful minister. And the minister for energy, in the case of Nigeria, the minister for petroleum will always remain a powerful minister. What you should do is this. You look for somebody with the requisite credentials and is of Nigerian extraction that will not abuse the powers mm -hmm. and put him there. You cannot say you will take away the powers. You, it, it's never done like that. Rather, take your time, do a due diligence and a background check and look for somebody with credible records, mm -hmm. credible credentials mm -hmm. and put there. Okay, which is that really is what we one. should do in all kind of positions that we're trying to fill in this then country. Then we have but the other two. Matter. But let me quickly, please please hold it. We'll go to the second uh, point that you wanted to make. Uh, but let me bring in uh, Comrade uh, Okoro Afo. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in, Mr. Honestly, I thank our guests and other scholars on this program. You see, oil and gas bill needs urgent passage to save the environmental degradation of the Niger Delta region. The gas play and the oil pollution has made the environment unconducive for human habitation, like what our guests have been saying. The PID bill should consider the, communi the community with the Niger Delta with at least a percentage of 20 to 25 percent of graduation, at least that's a, a, that's a probability. But the issue of this issue of scoundering of the past governors and the other leaders in that very area, I think we should not allow them to go free, scot free. Because they scoundered this morning, at the end of the day, you have seen Avengers, you have seen Koko uh, Koko, you have seen Polo Polo, different types of pressure uh, 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 groups from that place. Now we have to call this past in that area. So they are not supposed to hold any of you to come back to contest for any election in that area because they are the cause of all these problems we are facing in that Niger Delta. Allowing them to go through is a problem. Niger government should consider those boys doing oil brokering and give them license to produce our oil products for us. Reason. We have given license to other prominent Nigerians and they refuse to be the refinery here in Nigeria. Bring those boys, let them bring that, their own technology and establish it in for us in the United States. It will help us then we stop this issue of importing clothing. Look at uh, China. China things have been done by all these 
first world west. You go to Israel, you see all these young young boys. That green thing that the father and mother cannot do. But here in Nigeria, we do what? We kill that uh, process, which is very, very hard. Let's bring in those boys to be producing our oil for us so that we stop this issue of importation of oil from other countries. Thank you very much. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Okora. Yeah, let me answer the two points and help me remi remind me to mm. talk on bunkering. <laughs> like, like, like he was, like he yeah. was explaining yeah. an internal domestication because I want mm. to talk about the Nairanization mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Nigerian mm -hmm. oil and gas uh, industry. Uh, and also, you know, we didn't finish on the three. Yeah, main the three. I talked about the, the powers first. of the minister. Yes, so I want to talk on this. A lot of people two. thought that, that, yeah. that one, it is too much. Two, it is mm -hmm. not. No, no, let me. T yeah, I but want you to were explaining on, that. Look, I'll well, explain the you power of it, the minister. They're going to be powerful people. You've got to find the right person who will not abuse exactly. his discretionary powers. Exactly. In national powers. interest, there will be no abuse. Mm, mm. So, but you cannot say you will dilute the power of the minister okay. for energy or power of any country. You cannot dilute the powers of the minister for finance of any country. You cannot dilute the power of the minister for defense of any country. Rather, if you put the wrong people to occupy those ministerial positions, you blame yourself as a country or as, as a government. So, like, the next point has to do with what I said, frontier exploration. As we speak today, there are about seven potential basins in Nigeria. The first one is the Calabar flank. From. Then we have the Benue trough. Then we have the Chad basin. Then we have the Sokoto basin. Then we have the Dahomey basin. Then after the Dahomey basin, we now have the Niger Delta Basin, which is the Plorific Basins. So as we speak today, there are seven potential basins from where, or sedimentary basins, from where we can potentially get crude oil or gas. We are only relying today on Niger Delta uh, Basin. So, uh, yeah, we any particular reason? Yeah, the, no, no, yeah, well, it is Plorific. You have not even finished enjoying it. Okay. But there are so many okay. people who are saying, you, you, you must take exploration to our own part of mm -hmm. the country mm -hmm. and do it okay. and that rather than Niger. But what I'm saying is this. All these basins in national interest, they are Nigerian basins. If there is a need for us to explore in other places, fine. But if not, let us even maximize and take advantage of the benefits within the Niger Delta basins. Then the third one has to do okay, but, with but, but, the host community okay. fund. Uh, that, that's important. So, but, but before I go there, let me bring in um, uh, Larry, who has been waiting to contribute to the conversation. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Uncle Larry. Thank you. And um, good morning, the guests in the house. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Um, so good work you guys are doing. Um, personally, I believe so much has been said about the uh, Niger Delta. Well, one thing. I don't, I wouldn't want us to forget is the execution of projects and the funds that goes to that region. Because we can come up with different views and all that. But how do they implement these things in this region? Now we have the Ministry of Niger Delta, we have NDC and the statistics and the ability, and yet these regions are not being taken care of. What is really happening? So that's the one thing I want us to really look into. Okay. Okay, who are the people that are responsible for the development of this region? How are they doing? What are they doing? And uh, which organization is set up by the federal government to, to check the assesses of these people in charge of this thing? So I think those are the major right, things thank you. we should be looking at. Right thank you now. very much, Larry. Appreciate your call. Uh, you are going to go on now to yes, the Yes, the, the third point. You know, I talk about, yes, yes. The, the host community well, fund. You see, the first thing is the host community fund is necessary. You need to. But the first thing also you need to do is define who and what constitute a host community. Mm -hmm. By my definition, a host community is that community or that environment that is associated with the physical extraction of crude oil, then all other communities like the Arepos and all the other ones we hear, they are what? Oil and gas impacted communities or oil and gas activity impacted communities because for those, it is the pipeline that passes through them. So you have regulatory bodies like Nostra that has to take care of spill and others. They take care of those ones. But the community where you have fiscal extraction, 
is in those places that you have the flares, that you have all this gas, the flaring of gas. So such communities are truly being bedeviled by all kinds of respiratory problems, pollution. So that's why the whole so, impact aspect yes, of it comes And whenever on. there is danger, whether it is from the Niger Delta Avengers or saboteurs, those communities are always the first community of impact. Okay. So that fund is necessary. It is necessary. And also there are uh, a few intricacies about uh, who exactly this fund should be paid to because no, we, we, that's why we, we, we define what constitutes a okay. host community. But when then, you talk about also development in the Niger Delta, mm. before we go to different parts of mm -hmm. the, the, the PIB, to be honest. Okay, so, sorry, sorry, I beg your pardon because uh, Mahmoud uh, has been holding on for ages and uh, thank you very, very much. We appreciate that. Please go ahead now, Mr. Mahmoud. Hello, you're a good morning. Very, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Mr. Balazaka. Morning, sir. Morning, Mahmoud Nekewaya. Yes, sir. Yeah, please, you know, your conclusions are very hot and factual and too meaningful. But I think what I just want to say about this uh, PID bill is that it should be passed. So that yes. people in that region should be called, according to, well, I mean, when it was first passed some years ago, they say it's going to benefit the indigenous of the, of, I mean, of the Niger Delta people. So we feel if it is passed, let there be, let part of the this in the people will be in charge of this oil so that this business will, will end. And then, then, then secondly, the economy, so I want to, to digress to the economy, it's in recession. Most of the leaders there in the past they have given them a lot of money. And we don't know where all this money and the militants keep on saying that the Nigerians will have no right to question they have, we have no right to question them. That's for God's sake. It's not every day it's part of Nigeria, Sokoto or uh, Lagos or it's part of Nigeria. And some part of Nigeria have this oil also so if the government has been proactive enough, you know, the Nigeria don't have to depend on oil alone. Every region has its own potential of uh, to survive. So, so and honestly, when they talk about this the region is so annoying that uh, we feel the government is not even sincere. Look at the kind of money we waste on a uh, security vote for nothing. All this money is just given to governors to, to, to spend anyhow. And then uh, the budget is budget out. The both of these governors are not are not are not even active enough to say this is what I can produce for my own state. So I, I don't just know this tariff should be passed and then the God to us too. Thank you so much, Yori. Indeed, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mahmoud, for calling in. Yeah, yeah, yes, he, he he is right. You see, but like we said, we are trying to differentiate between the legal, the document, the contracting document, and what is going on as far as accountability on the parts of leaders yes, are concerned. Yes. But let me talk briefly on the accountability. To be fair, I stand to be proved wrong. Many of the Niger Delta leaders have no, not been fair, and I stand to be corrected. And I say this because I've been in the Niger Delta for the past probably 34 years. I'm a product of University of Port Harcourt. The East-West Road passed through the University of Port Harcourt. As far as 1983, when I became an undergraduate in University of Port Harcourt, I knew East-West Road. So even if there was a determination from the leaders there to just be constructing only 20 kilometers of road per year. Mm. From 1983, when I was there to today, you're talking about 34 years. Multiply 20 kilometers by 34. They're supposed to have had probably 600 and something kilometers of good roads. When you talk about trying to make sure you put light you build hostels, you do something about the soil chemistry because the, 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 there is pollution there. When you want to do something about bioremediation, I am telling you, it's not going to take this long because so, so, I have so seen... there's been neglect. Yes, but the on thing. the part of the actual leaders uh, yeah. on ground... Which is different from the framework that yes, we're and trying which is to, to... different from the national leaders. Exactly. National okay. leaders... At the point of national leaders, you have people from Bayelsa, Kaduna, Lagos State, all, yeah, all constitute over. national leaders. Right. But the local leaders, whether you call them governors or local government or traditional, have not been accountable enough. Uh, Mr. Usman, thank you for holding on. Uh, please go ahead, Yori Nikoi. Yeah, thank you, Uncle Yori. Thank you very much, sir. I want to align myself with your guest there. There is absolutely lack of accountability in that region, in the Niger Delta. Now, before the creation of Umpadek, 
there was this problem of environmental degradation and a lot of concern by the people of the Niger Delta. Now, in order for federal government to take care of that, federal government created Umpadek so as to take care of all this environmental degradation and uh, um, uh, 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 deterioration of their environment and their ecosystem. Now, Umpadek has been there, yet the problem still surfacing, which means Umpadek has not solved the purpose of its creation. It does not solve the problem of, that, of, the, of the people there. The federal government now reduced the Umpadek and it was forced into ND, NDDC. A lot of money has been pumped into that place for, to take care of the same problem as to why Umpadek was created. The same, and, you, and, and something that's very instrumental is that 90% of people that work in NDDC, from Umpadek to NDDC, are from that region. So the, the, the Umpadek was created for the people to take care of their region. Money was pumped. And if I'm not mistaken, from 2010 to 2014, about 7.4 billion was pumped into that region. But the money went under the ground. And who are the people controlling that money? Are the people from that from the Niger Delta? Are not people from the southeast or from the north, or from the west? Are people from the Niger Delta? Now, I think that was not enough. The same problem that we are talking about before the creation of Umpadek, which is the environmental degradation, is still surfacing again. And what the federal government did? Federal government now went again and then created Ministry of Niger Delta. Now, the Ministry of Niger Delta is populated by 90% of them. Now, if you remember very well. The minister of Niger Delta, then Orubebe, wrote a petition against Edwin Clark. That he gave Edwin Clark contract, that the minister of Niger Delta gave Edwin Clark contract to develop Niger Delta, to construct Niger Delta. That the man went out with the money. He wrote a petition to one of the corruption agencies. The same person, uh, then uh, Edwin Clark as well, wrote a petition against Orubebe that he supported the money of, of the minister of Niger Delta. And these are people from Niger Delta. So you can see the, the problem. They are not sincere, and they don't, and their people are not. They could not open their eyes and see beyond what they are seeing to not question their their leaders. And look, all this money that they have been pumped into the, uh, our region by the federal government, have you accounted for it? Yes, you did not account for it. But you cannot be blaming the federal government. I think federal government have not done anything in that region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Usman. I, th I think there will be a need also for us to to discuss one day on accountability within Niger Delta. Okay. The, the, the reason, yeah. Because that's not really the subject yes, for today. But, 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 but it's necessary inevitably, the whole it thing, is butting in. Yes, the whole thing is actually very, very confusing. Because the reason why I'm telling you this is because every country you go to, there, there is a way even nature designs some countries. If you look at Ni uh, Southwest, or Lagos in particular, whether you take it, accept it or not, Lagos has made Nigeria to be, or this part of Nigeria, to be the center for commerce. If you look at the southeast, you will see entrepreneurial skills. You go to the Aba, you go to Ariaria, you see creativity. Then when you look at Niger Delta, Niger Delta is supposed to also be a region that has to do with oil and gas industry activities. Then maybe when you look at the central part of Nigeria, like Abuja, that central part is probably like center of administration. Then when you look at the Northeast in those days before the destruction of uh, uh, the Northeast, that, was, that area had to do with something that has to do with agriculture, right? Mm. Then when you look at the Northwest and some part of central part of Nigeria, they are endowed with mineral resources. Sure. Then when you look at upper part of Southwest, you have special products like cocoa. Honestly, nature has designed Nigeria very well. And if ordinarily we will respect even the design of nature, it simply means if I want to do so many things about commerce, mm -hmm. I should just come to the Southwest. Mm -hmm. If I'm interested in trading and entrepreneurial skill, I should go to the Southeast. But as it is, everybody seems but, but to be depending on the mono. On, mo yes. on, on, on mono. And let that me is what it, is destroying Nigeria. Um, uh, Sorry, we are moving away from I, I the real do, petroleum I, industry bill and talking about other aspects. But it's something that is mixed. Uh, okay, we, we I, I can't we absorb have, our, I, I our ourselves away. I, I, I think a Nigerian abroad uh, is it in Mali? Uh, is it uh, innocent? Ba Hello, uh, Bama, is that you, innocent Bamako in Mali? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I was yeah, wondering which country was talking Mali. from Bamako, Mali. Ah, ah thank yeah, you. Yeah. Please go ahead well, now. You're uh, on air. Please, uh, I appreciate your uh, your 
you yes. know, what we are doing and uh, to sensibilize the Nigerians. Uh, what I want to say is that I think there's a problem we're having in Nigeria. Most of the time, when we want to talk about things, things concerning Nigeria, we are going towards our personal or uh, right. sentimental uh, uh, concern. So please, what I want to say, what stops the federal government from developing the Niger Delta one and signing that bill into law so as to help develop Nigeria? Because what we are, what we are seeing is that what we are having in place and all the things we are bringing in is not helping and it's not working. What we should do is to develop the area, like giving a uh, distance, not giving money to people that we carry this money and go. And we know the politicians from Nigeria that those people, this money they are calling to us, many of the time, they come back to them, the politicians, and they have their percent and other things. Yeah. What of developing Nigeria? Nigeria is under the law. The law. <laughs> and we are saying, we are saying something. Look at Shabuja and other places, that is this developed with these people's money. And we are telling them that they are doing this, they are doing that. Let us tell ourselves the truth. The truth is that there is no justice against that reason. We have a, a Goni land uh, clean up. They said it will last 30 years. What kind of project is that? Let All us right tell then. ourselves uh, the truth. So that Nigeria will move forward. Innocent, Thank we've completely you. run out of time. Sorry, so, sorry, but thank you very much for your impassion. And he's, he's really being uh, nationalistic about this. No, he's nationalistic. You know, even, if even, you look at it. Even in taking care of the Nigerian oil and gas industry, you see, there is something we don't, we, we, we are making a mistake about. The local consumption, yeah, the local consumption is different. We can develop Nigeria even internally. In, for internal consumption, what you just need to do is nairanize that aspect. Then the one you export, you can earn your dollars and your foreign exchange. In nairanization, get the crude oil from the wellhead in Naira. Move them to the refineries. Unfortunately, we don't have functional ones. But if you have, you move them to the refineries in Naira, refine them in Naira, sell them to Nigerians in Naira, generate your Naira, and use your Naira inside. That is one. Then secondly, we know that the flow of gas and crude oil is being disrupted or disturbed, but it will not last forever. Immediately, this, we, we are able to reconcile and resolve this problem. There should be enough fertilizer plants because, as you speak, ammonia is the major ingredient of fertilizer, and it is from natural gas that you get ammonia. Since there is a plan to go into diversification and agriculture, Please, we want to see fertilizer plants scattered all over the country. And, and then, all of this will be better facilitated with completely run out of time. Once you have an integrated, a holistic document PID, called the Petroleum you know, Industry just, Bill. Bill. And let us I, not talk about deregul I mean, uh, deregulation. Let's talk about liberalization. Okay. The current Nigerian economy is too weak to have it deregulated. Let's liberalize it and protect okay. it. Okay, thank you very much, Bala. And I know there's so much more to be said about this whole matter, but we've completely run out of time. Uh, but the petroleum industry bill needs to be passed. And as you said, in That's a holistic manner, completely and, and a, a, a complete integrated bill. We have bill. the experts, congregate okay. them, right ask then. them the necessary questions, okay, and they will answer them. Thank you very, very much, uh, Balana Zaka. Um, you certainly are a, a stakeholder uh, when they look at it, any way they look at it. Um, oil and gas expert, Balana, and as I said at the beginning, a chartered accountant and an engineer, uh, a petroleum engineer in the house. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on Monday, God willing, with a fresh edition of the program. I'm Yori Folani. Do have a great weekend.